What's up, studio? Welcome to, it's, it's January 2023. You know, it January is. means not a lot of tech coming out, which means we get to chill a little bit, and that means Q&A. So we asked what you guys wanted to know on Twitter to the studio, which means you can ask anybody at the studio anything. A little more variety, of course. Okay. And uh, allegedly, we have a pretty good variety of questions. I mean, I saw a good variety, so. Aren't you glad we're here instead of CES? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Well, see, that's the thing, is it is until I figure out a way to get someone else to do something. Uh, no, yeah, it's it's not teams. I mean, we have the team at the studio, which is the team that makes the stuff. And then there are, like, behind-the-scenes people who work with or for the team. You don't see them on camera, but they're also equally important doing things that I also used to be doing. <laughs> never. Nope, never. Locked. We've ended everything now. <laughs> and then you just cut to Miles and Alex. Thank you, I'm new. I'm Miles Somerville. I am the resident camera holder and automotive junkie. And I'm Alex Wolf. I am the assistant to the studio manager. Shout out to everyone who's noticed that I've been in every single video for like since I've started. The hand in the car there was like, what yeah, is that shout hand out, back Shout out there? to everyone on Reddit who, who, who made an entire post and, about my hand. And in, the Discord. The People were like, did anybody else see that hand? I usually take Monday as like a starting to compile notes, Tuesday as a like outline everything. We record the podcast Wednesday mornings. Eat lunch. Eat lunch. We'll be done by like one ish, one thirty. Yeah, and then we just like hit it. So I start importing the footage. You start the audio. On a great week, I'm done with like the cuts and the angles and a bunch of notes for B-roll and stuff mm -hmm. by the end of Wednesday, and you're done with the audio by the end of Wednesday. Thursday is just a hard edit day. We're just working all day Thursday trying to like finish the main podcast video. When we first started working together, if you know we couldn't do it in a full day. Like if mm -hmm. we had the audio ready Thursday morning, it meant Thursday was gonna be like a late night. Yeah. Yeah, they'll typically come up with the ideas. I just have to, I'll just edit it, um, color or add like special elements. For waveform, Adam and I will have a lot of discussions on what we think will work for the main thumb. It's usually just asking what we're doing for the center image. Studio probably takes the longest out of all three channels just because of the effects that I add. So I like to sketch those out in my sketchbook and then uh, I'll throw in like a couple options sometimes and have people vote on them. And then we'll, we'll like change it from there. But those, those involve more process. The other two channels are more straightforward. I have never used DaVinci Resolve, but I, I have it on my iPad. I haven't actually opened it once, um, but I want to try it because more and more the iPad is becoming my favorite um, like personal creative device. And video is kind of the last step for me in, in being able to like take the iPad out on a weekend instead of my MacBook or something. Like if, if DaVinci is good on that, then I feel like with my workflow, I would edit it in a separate program and then export like a different file into DaVinci and then I would do like the color in DaVinci because I don't really think of DaVinci as like an editing first program. Yeah. But I know a lot of people use it because there's a good, really good free version and then there's also like a premium version that are pretty powerful. Um, but it's not my go-to normally. We've been using a lot of different cameras, so I'll have DaVinci to make LUTs for us. But other than that, Cutting in there is not as efficient as Final Cut, so I still find yeah. myself going back to Final Cut for like animations that I'll do sparingly or uh, sound design, like structuring. Mm. But usually I've been using Ableton for that. If you had to use Final Cut for the rest of your life or DaVinci for the rest of your life, what would your choice be? Mm, that's kind of a hard one. I know. Mm, I could probably go with DaVinci. Wow. Yeah. Okay. The metaverse is going to have another really hard year. Is that Putting, a flop, though? I would consider that a flop. I want NFTs to die. <laughs> and I want them to just stop. It's not new, but I feel like this could be our year and they could be gone. And I'm really we, excited. We, we bullied NFTs out of video games. Uh -huh. We can bully them out of everything. We could just get rid of them. We could. The Mario movie. 
That's going to be a flop in 2023. The Oscars, the 2023 Oscars are going to be a flop. Ooh, I'm going to um, make a lot of people angry. I'll say the Super Bowl is going to be a flop. Probably. Cybertruck. I don't think it comes out in 2023. Is that a flop? It's a yeah, flop if yeah. it's released 2023 and doesn't yeah. come out in 2023. I was going to say Pixel Fold. You think that's going to flop? I don't want it to flop. Premium EVs and premium EV startups. I think it's a little oversaturated at the moment and like in this economy? I'd have to say whatever the next nothing product is. <laughs> Shout out to Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Ronin 2 might be longest because we had Ronin 2 upstairs and we're still rolling with oh, it. Oh, my studio monitors. Oh, your monitors have to be. I've had my the speakers on my desk since at least 2016. Six years. Yeah. At the very latest. Yeah, might be those. Literally every video and nothing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> the. Seven Keys to the Internet long form episode we did. Yeah. We drove to Virginia, basically vlogged the whole thing. We got there, recorded the entire ceremony. They gave us all of their ceremony. We interviewed yeah. like four of the people for like 20 minutes each. And we didn't end up using like I know, 99 And that doesn't even include like the six hours of pre-interviews. We yeah, did. we like researched by Skyping with people and interviewing them yeah. and we recorded all of those just so that we understand what we're talking about. But then when it comes to putting the episode together, it's like, where do we drop them in? Like we just, we never ended up using a lot of it. I think an important part of being a creative person is accepting that sometimes yeah. things just have to be done, even if they're not done in your brain. And, you know, lucky for us, um, like we get paid to do this. So there's like, a, hmm. there's a real incentive for things to be done. Yeah. As of yesterday, my new favorite EV is the Yang Wang U9, $145,000 hypercar. I'm gonna be a basic boy and just, I think a Model S Plaid is pretty sweet and saw Marquez's video. I'm like, wow, that, that would be awesome. EVs are cool, but I feel like they're so impractical if you're like a person who has like a rental home yeah. and like there's nowhere to plug in your car without dangling it out of like the second story window until there's like a more feasible way to like actually have one. If you're not like a homeowner or like someone who's like really rich, I just can't see having one anytime yeah. soon. Just visually without like range or like uh, service, I'd say like a Porsche Taycan. I think the Taycan is like so beautiful. I'd probably have a Porsche Taycan. Plaid has a mile lead over the, over the rest along with R1T, but if you take superchargers out, Plaid is like barely above Taycan. My, my favorite car in the world is the Porsche Cayman. And rumor is that they're supposed to be working on an electric version of that. We've seen like teasers of an electric Boxster, so that's the dream. But as far as what exists currently, I love the Polestar 2. I really, and I think this is partially Jono's doing, uh, the Rivian R1S mm. is pretty sick. I would kill for an R1T. It's so nice. I want it so bad. I love the Ionic. It's so pretty. The 5. Yeah, yeah, I'm the yeah. Ionic 5, thank you. When the, that video for the Ford Mach-E 1400 came out like a year and a half ago, two years ago. I pretty much thought that was the coolest thing I'd ever mm -hmm. seen. They're just miking it really close. <sighs> yeah, listen to how cool. What? Dude, this is the coolest sounding car that I think anyone's ever made. I've been playing mostly Overwatch right now, but Ascendant 1 is my peak. Do you want it? So like- What is the NBA equivalent? NBA equivalent? <laughs> it goes bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond, Ascendant. Immortal, and then the top 500 are radiant. It's pretty high. I'm in the top 10% of players. Okay, that was what yeah. I was looking for. You are, um... Was I have played in a couple? Paul George. Nice. I think we have done four so far. Uh, I definitely want to up the volume that we're doing. It's, it's kind of hard to... It's like sort of like a 20% project for me because... I have all these other things that we're doing in the studio, like the main channel and the studio channel and waveform and like regular waveform episodes. But I'm trying to like put more effort into them. And fortunately, the seven keys of the internet video was going to be like originally was going to be like a three hour video that included so much other information that I split it in half. And now the other half of that information is 
almost already ready. So we're, we're going to have another long form coming up and I want to try to do like, I would love to do like one a quarter if possible, but they definitely take a lot of time and I just need to like reinvest my energy resources into them. While I don't think we worked that hard on it, it still wound up taking a lot of time, which was the Dead Mouse studio tour because we went to a concert where we stood outside all day with a security guard not letting us in, went to the concert at night, Mm -hmm. then went to his house, spent the day there. We toured the cube that he Mm -hmm. had the concert like from. And then, yeah, how he programs the lights for the cube. Yeah. And then how he makes the music that syncs with the lights programmed with the cube in his home studio. But when we went to the home studio, he had just gotten delivery of all like these new new panels. Yeah. So he installed them and we got to watch him install them and hang out and see the studio, but it wasn't finished yet. Yeah. So we put it on the back burner and then Linus went over and made like an incredible video that was everything you'd ever need to know. So we just scrapped it. Yeah. I was really, really happy with trivia extravaganza. It was a little looser, rough around the edges, um, but yeah, I was really, really happy with how that came out. Probably my favorite one was the James Webb Telescope one, the James Webb Space Telescope, because we got to like actually speak with people from NASA. That was that year too. Yeah, that was wow. really cool. Like I know last year was like, what is time? The iPhone. Um, what's what's up oh, with, the with the iPhone camera, camera yeah. video? But in the intro to that Ooh. is the new sound effects for our like channel animation. And I made that in 2022. Yeah. Um, and I think that was the thing that I, got, I was most proud of. That was cool. In that year. The new space race, which was really cool, which was sort of like how privatized um, satellite companies are making astronomy a lot harder for scientists. My favorite video on my personal channel was the how the Italian Renaissance can save the smartphone camera video. I obviously liked making the Dolly one. Oh yeah, that was really fun. It stressed me out a lot, but it was really fun. F-150 Lightning, because it was the first time we got to use the trailer, uh, the hitch rig. Yep. We went out, well, we went to my house, so I didn't have to drive home, mm-hmm. which was awesome. Yes. And just like the roads, like I live out in a more like rural area, so it's just like some really beautiful roads to shoot on. And we were filming a truck with the second truck that they lent us using this new hitch rig for the first time. It was just so a fun. really fun day of shooting. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with the blind smartphone camera test. We worked on it for months. It was obviously a build in the background with the site that we put together and our, our ideas for how to make it work mm-hmm. and then testing it with the Discord and then launching it and getting millions of data points and then analyzing them and then the video comes out yeah. and I, I, that whole process. Pretty Seven terabytes of bandwidth serving pictures. It was a good time. Do you have a bill for that yet? Oh, I can't. <laughs> I can't wait to see yeah. that. Yeah. Well, I can't wait because I'm not paying. I feel like the ping pong stuff was really fun. That was fun. Just because it is not any related to literally anything we would ever do and it totally makes no sense at all, but it's actually one of the very fun things. David Blaine was a really fun one. It was it was really cool and he was great to work with, super friendly, uh, taught some tricks that I don't really remember how to do, but... I cannot tell you how sad I was that I missed that. Yeah. That was the day I literally moved here. Oh, really? You guys were like, David Blaine's here. And I was like, <laughs> can, I, can I come? You should have. No, because I couldn't be in any of the contests. No, but you could have just like come to I just hang out. stand in the corner and watch David Blaine. <laughs> but it was literally like the moment I moved to New Jersey, I was like, you guys were like, he just arrived to the studio. Yeah. And I was like... <laughs> Yeah, I don't currently have factory tours specifically in our plans, but whenever I hear about a factory that does something really cool or interesting, I'm interested in seeing it. But like most of our focus on all of our channels are on the final product. So any way that we can tie it to the final product and how it either benefits that or changes your experience when you buy the thing, that's what we focus on. People don't realize that our team is uh, very, quick with releasing all our stuff and making travel plans usually really delays us in how quickly we want to set up videos. So like we almost all the time say no to like, do you want to come see this? Do you want to come see that? We've said no and no more often. So it's going to be a really awesome factory tour if we say yes and make a video. Yeah. 
I would love to build more keyboards. I just posted like some pictures of the Monokey TGR Jane V2, I think it's called, because they sent it over. <laughs> it's like the new LG monitor. Um, yeah. I would love to build more. Yes. They're very expensive also, so that's kind of tough. It's like 700 for that, and then keycaps are anywhere between like 30 to 60 bucks, and then the switches are probably like 20 to 50 bucks, and the stabilizers are 12. I used to play this game called Maple Story, and my first PC couldn't even run that. That's how old it was. I think I had an Acer, a Samsung flip phone that was an, it was like the razor for people who couldn't afford a razor. My first laptop was a iBook G3 clamshell. This was my first phone. I burn everything that I don't actively use. <laughs> <laughs> my first laptop was a MacBook Pro from 2010. And it was 15 inch MacBook Pro. My first computer was an HP something or other. It ran uh, Windows ME. It was not a great computer. My first phone was an LG something or other. It was a flip phone. My first computer was a 2006 Mac Mini. And honestly, I think that's peak Mac Mini design. Uh, my first phone was the very first Moto G, and it's, it honestly held me down for quite a while. Until the age discrepancy <laughs> based on those answers. So I don't have my first phone anymore. I think my parents actually still have it. It was like a flip phone. I could not tell you what brand or like... LG VX8300. It's some just like silver generic Verizon phone. At some point in high school, I bought my first, like my first computer, uh, which was a MacBook, a PowerBook G4. I got my first laptop in college, which was very exciting. Dell Latitude laptop, weighs like 700 pounds, absolute <laughs> tank. Kyocera Rise, brilliant. Android 2 slide out keyboard. Your uh, first phone was already an Android? My first phone was a flip phone from Virgin Mobile. I don't even know what model yeah, it was. Yeah, you had Virgin Mobile? So I did not have Virgin Mobile. My cousin had Virgin Mobile. Oh my God. I got his hand-me-down, and it had the coolest ringtone, T.I.'s Rubber Band Man in 8-bit. Rubber Band Man. Winter break of my senior year, I got a, my first MacBook Pro. Mm -hmm. It, like, all the walls around me got yeah. broken. Like, now I can start really using music software and, like, pushing it. Like, so yeah. using Photoshop and pushing it. My first computer was my dad's hand-me-down Sony Vio something Ooh. something. One of those. LASIK is the best money I ever spent. If you are a candidate for it, I recommend it. Basically, you just go to a, a professional and get evaluated, and they'll tell you if they can do it or not. And uh, I don't know, I wore contacts for a long time, wore glasses before that. Now I just wake up and I can see, and it's the best. <laughs> so I, I can yeah. confirm. Two thumbs up. To keep your voice on the main channel, we have three or four secondary channels now that has everyone's voices and we can put yeah. more videos out and we can find no, more niches to explore. Nothing against Linus or why they do it, but it's a different philosophy to approach uh, essentially the same task, which is we, we want to make videos people would want to watch and we want to make channels that people would want to subscribe to. So we had a couple ideas for neat channels, mm -hmm. we made them and now we're making videos on them that we'd want to watch. Um, but I always picture what they're doing kind of like, like a video factory mm -hmm. where you don't really get too attached to any one project. You kind of just like stamp and pass it on and it, I don't know, it's, it's a, it's a way of, of running a sustainable business. Obviously it works. Uh, so we're fortunately in a position where we get to pick and choose more meaningful projects for us and spend more time with them and release less stuff, but that's fine. No. Nothing? <laughs> no. <laughs> <And> void. <laughs> Feel nothing? Game Boy Advance SP Red. Fire Red okay. Pokemon game. Fair. 10 out of 10. Super Nintendo with like all of like the old Mario games and stuff that my family used to have growing up. Why get rid of it when you only get like 20 bucks for it if I can just keep it and then it's priceless to me. My car, my 3 Series, I, I'm definitely emotionally attached to that thing. But if we are talking about mobile products, probably my AirPods Pro, just because it isn't something I necessarily need to have, like a smartphone, but something I use every single day. And, you know, it's it's stuck with me. My kitchen gadgets I get really attached to. 
uh, and I don't want to like replace them or whatever. Like I'm like I like this and this is what I do. Phones and stuff. I am I'm very much an on to the next one kind of person. <laughs> We upgraded to a larger robot, which isn't just larger, but it has more reach so it can do orbits around a larger variety of things. Matter of fact, Mia could not orbit. Mm -hmm. And it's also a different mechanism for moving, belt driven versus I believe hydraulic. So Mia was not as smooth. The main reason it's there as a lamp essentially now is not because we just like never want to use it again. It's because the computer and a lot of the software that we were using for Mia just wound up being the same stuff that we use for Colossus. So we didn't buy a whole nother setup to run Mia when yeah. Colossus can just do so much. The blind smartphone camera test, which we did with a website this year, was designed by Zach. Shout out to Zach. Uh, Zach reached out to us via our inbox a year ago, basically, uh, which gave us like 10, 11 months of lead time to decide what we wanted to build, to test it, build it, iterate, test again, keep building, to the point where we got to November, and basically the three of us went back and forth to Zach and finally finished the thing, yeah. put the pictures in, and launched it. So Zach is our hero for that. And so Tim also that. did a lot of designing on that website. Fact, fact. And I'm not saying that just because I can see Tim in the reflection <laughs> that he's standing behind us right now. Awards, think uh, NBA awards. Okay, rookie of the year, MVP, first team. We're basically putting together a first team all smartphone, right? In different categories, it is entirely subjective other than the battery category, which is kind of subjective, but also just like best battery experience, longest battery life, that type of thing. So if you have any disagreements, you probably just have a different opinion than I do. Part of the reason I even applied is because I watched the studio tour video and I was like, where are the, where are the ladies at? Yeah. Where, where are they at? Um, so it felt like one of those things where it's like, that I should, someone should be there. I should be there. And then it kind of, it worked out really well, apparently, because uh, I'm here now. Anyone who's been the odd man out in a room, it makes it a lot easier to notice when something's missing and it feels sometimes like you have to be the one to do something about it because it doesn't always happen, so. But I'm, everyone's really great, the studio's very nice, got some very lovely people. We could use more ladies. We could. Just saying, we could use more people. How about it? It's me. There's a handful I'm of us, best. but I'm pretty sure this guy's the best game. I'm the best. I know David's rank in Dota, and I'm definitely the best. <laughs> I will say, if anyone wants to challenge me to N64 Smash, pff, you play over. me and Melee, then you're gonna have a hard time. Yeah, David, yeah. David and M Michael are very good at Smash. Yeah, the biggest problem is just finding the time in everybody's schedule where we can clear out an hour or two to play a game, and then I have to sit there and edit for the next week, um, which doesn't usually take priority over other videos. So. Maybe a live stream is a better idea, and we might look into that at some point in the new year, but um, not not really right now. I do love um, really cursed Steam games. If anyone wants to play, they put a lot of like betas on Steam that like aren't fully fledged games. There is a Bigfoot game on Steam for like fifteen dollars, and it's virtually unplayable. Is it, is it a simulator? Like, are you Bigfoot? So or? you can be. So okay. there's like. There, you're a group like finding pe lost campers in like a campsite, and then Bigfoot's trying to absolutely slaughter you. <laughs> but if you have enough people, one person could be Bigfoot, and the other people can be like the camp people. He's almost so OP in every update that you literally cannot play the game. Um, so oh, yeah. if anyone wants to play some really ugly Steam games, um, <laughs> that I feel like that would be very fun with the, our group of people. So. Yeah. You first, I gotta think about them. Okay, yeah, because I- Because you got a pretty good collection too. I do have a pretty good collection, yeah. Um, all right, the watch I'm wearing right now is, uh, it's a vintage watch from the 80s. It's made by a company called American Time. This is sort of like my casual one. And then when I don't really care about like fashion stuff, I wear my Casio Pro Trek 2500R1. <laughs> it's about the size of an IHOP pancake <laughs> and a 1967 Hamilton Phenomatic oh, yeah. in gold. Cool. It's like 
It's like that's so thin. Epic. That's a good watch. Yeah. I have probably six or seven that I actively wear. Yeah. There's the two John Mayer G-Shocks that I have, a Doxa Sub 300T, which is like my pride and joy. That's such a nice watch. I love that watch, it's so pretty. A Master Graph from Brew Watches, the Garmin Instinct. I am now on Apple Watch Ultra because New Year, new me, and I'm trying to be fit and healthy. I only b have bought one watch. Adam didn't believe that I would only buy one watch. This is a Seiko 5 Worn and, Worn and Wound Special Edition. Um, they made a thousand of them with a watch review company based in Brooklyn. And I met a guy at one of my cafes that had it, and I really liked it, so I found one and I bought it. I mean, everyone, I'm sure everyone said coffee, right? Probably. Coffee. Coffee. Because you gotta go fast. But not everyone here drinks coffee. Most people. We got a, we got a coffee gang in the morning. <laughs> Honestly, I, I will say pro it probably is coffee more than anything. <laughs> it's probably the drink I should be drinking a lot less than I do, but you know. No, no. I suck at making coffee. Can't okay. figure it out. No one here drinks my coffee because that. Um, I'll drink it sometimes. No, you won't. I've noticed, <laughs> I've noticed. I'll go, hey everybody, I'm making coffee. Anybody want some? No one says yes. <laughs> Five minutes later, everyone has a fresh cup of coffee that they made themselves. <laughs> right now I'm drinking a Diet Pepsi. I beat Marquez at a game of ping pong while drinking Diet Pepsi yesterday, so I think there's something good in here. Yeah, the um, aspartame. Yeah. <laughs> chocolate milk, baby. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Well, it's like Planet Oat. Yeah, chocolate milk. I drink a lot of tea. We have a nice variety of tea that Mariah and I hammer at pretty frequently. I mean, I have a protein shake, which is just powder and water, yeah. which sucks. Yeah. I can, in a single day, have a cup of coffee, then like two bottles of water, then a nice cold DC, and then a juice, and then, I don't know, coffee's probably my favorite drink here, though. Coke Zero. <clears throat> the superior Coke, the superior option. <laughs> What's up? Welcome to the Waveform Studio Tour. I'm your boy, I'm your producer, Ellis Rovin. Let's take a look and see what's inside right here. Let's go. All right, step up. We got the desk. Your boy Adam's right here. I'm right here. We got this whole thing. Hey, you ever want to control the lights? Boom. Oh, it doesn't work right now. We'll set that up later. Doesn't even matter. Let's go. Camera, camera, camera. Wide angle lens, SM7B. Classic radio mic. Marquez likes something different. We got the RE27ND. It's what Colin Cowherd uses. It's all compressed and high and bright. It's awesome. Light. See this thing? See that thing? You hate that thing. It's ugly. We take this thing, boom. Don't have to look at it. It's perfect. Four seats, four contestants, four hosts. We use this to make thumbnails. After we shoot, we go, hey, make a face. Right here. <laughs> and then we take the thumbnails. What am I forgetting? I don't know, that's it. <laughs> I would say we have the conversations about the videos before we make it. So, <laughs> generally we come to some sort of consensus before we agree on what we're publishing. I like to think I have a pretty decent amount of autonomy with the studio channel. So generally, like because I'm the one editing most of the videos, that's, that's usually, I guess, my final call. But we don't have a lot of conflict or arguments over like, what should or shouldn't be in a video or or statements made in videos or anything. Yeah, I feel like there's nothing controversial enough that we're doing yeah. that is like a huge creative difference. And ultimately Marquez has final say for the main channel, but there's not usually a lot of like, it's pretty clear cut what's gonna happen. So I yeah. don't really have a problem most of the time. I think we're all generally on the same page with most things. Yeah. So we do a few different things. Mm -hmm. If we're trying to share a link or a picture or just send them a message, we'll use Slack yeah. normally, or we have a big Google Doc that's mm -hmm. up that we're all looking at. So either type a message in the Google Doc, Slack, or the far more interesting answer to half of that question is what we do at our desks. Yeah. Because we actually have an Ethernet cable <laughs> <laughs> going between our two computers specifically so we can send each other huge files. It's fantastic. Well, it's a wizard blizzard. It's, it's called having 6,000 tabs open, let me tell you. And uh, I consistently get so much hate 
from everyone in the office. I like about that. all my tabs. Yeah. But tabs um, tabs are information. You should you should close your tabs. Tabs you are really, important. You should really close your tabs. You got to keep them open so you can reference you things. Really, you she should gets properly tabs. vilified for it. Yeah, I coexist with the chaos. I am glad that Messi got his his cup because he he earned it. But if I would have to admit who I was supporting, I would say it was Mbappe. Mbappe is that guy. He's up next or currently. He is now. He is forever. <laughs> Mbappe. Who is going to win the Premier League, you say? I'm glad you asked because I also have something to say about that. I believe that it is going to be a little team called Arsenal with Saka and Martinelli. You're a silly man. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's pretty much it. Uh, we answered plenty of questions, I'm sure, but if you have any other questions or if you have more stuff you want to talk about, comment section's open, Twitter's open, Discord, we always hang out in there, so uh, feel free to chat with, uh, with the team, and now you've met some new people and you know what it's like to be here. All right, cool, that's it. Thanks for watching. Have a great 2023. See you later.